are not prepared. Welcome to another video guys. Today we're gonna talk about the expected future nerfs in Alterac Valley. It's been a while since the last patch and the meta really does seem very polarized so I do believe we should be seeing a nerf wave pretty soon and it should be pretty big. It would be awesome if you drop a like and a subscribe to the channel if you still haven't but now let's check out what the future nerfs might be. Okay so first let's start off with a glimpse of what the top 1000 legend meta looks like right now and as you can see Rogue is really crushing it a little bit too much if you ask me. These are the stats from the last nerf wave but let's bring it back only three days ago and this is still pretty much the same thing. One less rogue archetype but as you can see the win rates are a lot higher than everything else. So right now in top 1000 legend it's basically rogue city. The popularity of rogue is just too high above 35 percent and we also have Mozaki mage, Libram paladin and some druid and shaman action but as you can see stats go very lower. As we go up in the ranks you can see Libram paladin and quest warrior become a lot more usable but those decks just don't do as well in top legend. But still, they are definitely very strong themselves too. By the way, I did watch Zeddy's video about his nerf predictions as well and we pretty much have the same mindset about what the nerf should be. But yeah, I was thinking about doing this video for a few days now and even talk about it a little on stream, so no, I'm not just copying him, it just seems to be the case that great minds think alike and other lies we tell ourselves. Anyway, the first card on the nerf list has to be Wild Pog no. like this card is just busted in the state it is currently, like we did not expect this to be this strong but getting a couple of these down to zero mana as soon as turn one like that is just insane. It is, it is way too consistent, it is way too good and you gotta realize there's a problem in the game if secret passage turn one do nothing is actually a solid play, like what is that? It's just too good, it's very reactive and it's very aggressive as well cause how can you deal with a couple of these as soon as turn 2 or even turn 3 like it's just too good and that's not even half of it like normally when you drop the wild bug no it's not even the only minion you're dropping so it's it's insanely powerful it really needs to get bumped up in the mana section and i think 7 mana is gonna be pretty pretty fair for this card to still remain relevant but not as oppressive in the end of the day thief rogue is very strong because of this card but it's not its only win condition and it can do huge edwin otks as well so i don't think it's entirely gonna kill the deck but it's definitely gonna drop down the popularity which is what we're trying to do bring some more diversity on ladder another card i really think is just too good for what it is is shadow crafter scabs this card is so versatile it can be used defensively offensively and with combos in mind and it's just doing way too much for way too little sitting at seven men only you're stuck questioning what did hunter and warrior do to blizzard for them to be six mana do nothing whereas scabs is literally winning you the entire game like good luck winning the game after a scabs is played it just gives the rogue so much advantage and being able to cheat out two mana each turn is just huge for rogues I don't want to entirely kill this card so I think bumping it up to 8 mana is somewhat fair. It is giving the opponent an extra turn to try and figure out how they're gonna be playing around it but sitting at 7 mana this is just way too good. Like the hero power is OP, the effect is OP, the couple of 4-2 stealths are OP, like it just keeps on giving. So yeah bumping this to 8 is the least blizzard can do I think. And another card we have on the radar for rogue is also cloak of shadows which is not something most people are seeing on ladder but in top 1000 this card is getting played way too much and it's very not fun and not interactive. We all remember how busted ice block was and this card is no different. You can still go face with untargetable stuff like hunter hero power and stuff like that but still it's just too good for too little and having two copies of these definitely buys the rogues way too much time. So again I think a simple mana bump to up to four is gonna reduce the flexibility for this card and it's gonna make it a lot harder for the rogues to actually kill you while they're trying to stealth as well. Next on the list is another very problematic card in High Legend, Mazaki. Mazaki Mage is basically the new quest mage and this card seems to be too powerful for only 5 mana. As soon as the mage casts a couple of encounters flow and finds Mazaki you're basically dead as soon as turn 6 and that is just very very degenerate like seriously. It is one of the worst experiences you can be having in this game and getting killed as soon as turn 6 from a combo deck in standard that is just what is this? Even wild wasn't that broken in some of its stages like seriously. I'm not sure if Mazaki Mage is the real problem or encounters flow but if the devs keep on refusing to nerf the actual problem Mazaki Mage might be in for a bump of mana up to 6 or maybe a cap to the spell power it can gain each turn. 
I really don't believe Mazaki is gonna get nerfed because we all know that Blizzard hates nerfing legendary cards, so I think the real issue is actually Encanter's Flow. Even though Encanter's Flow already got nerfed once, I don't think it got nerfed enough. Like, this card is still so oppressive and it unlocks the solitaire gameplay style we all hate. Since your entire deck is consisting of spells only with a couple of minions in there, Encanter's Flow is effectively reducing the cost of your deck by 20 mana, which is absurd. And when you slap in a second Encanter's Flow, that's basically minus 40 mana. So yeah, it's really really bad. I'm not sure if bumping this up to 4 mana is reasonable, but we all know what the real problem is. Spells should not get discounted below 1 mana. This has been a problem since day 1 in Hearthstone, and devs usually have been good playing around stuff like that, but for some reason Encanter's Encanter's Flow keeps dodging the bullet like there's no tomorrow. Even though they bumped it up to 3 mana, it's still too good, so I really think they need to revisit this card and either bump it to 4 mana or just deny it the possibility to reduce spells below 1. It's only a common card, so don't worry Blizz, we're not getting that much out of the whole deal. Next up we have Lightforce Carol, which is another insanely OP hero card which gets auto-included in every single Paladin archetype. Getting a 2-5 weapon that literally never loses charges, slashing all of the damage taken to your face by half and having a Blessing of Kings on demand from your hero power is just way too much. I did talk about this card on my last nerf prediction and somehow Carol actually and somehow Carol actually dodged those nerfs even though the wave was pretty huge. Paladin did get his Alliance Bannerman nerfed, which was the biggest joke in terms of nerfs ever. And again, it's just a freaking common card, so yeah, thanks a lot for that, Blizz. Iron Deep Trog also got nerfed, but it wasn't only because of Paladin. But I really think Carol is actually the real problem here. Liberum Paladin was a strong archetype before the new expansion, and now it's even stronger. In lower ranks, at least. But you can even see it in Top Legend as well. I really think this is one of the strongest hero cards out there, and it just needs to get toned down a bit, costing 8 mana at least. It is gonna give Paladins a little bit of a more awkward turn 7, because on turn 8 they can also be playing Varian, so now they're gonna have to choose between him and Lightforced Carol. And again, the choice is gonna be pretty simple, isn't it? Now let's talk about Warrior, which has been doing way too good for way too long. Quest Pirate Warrior has been dominating the lower ranks, and it's one of the most consistent and simple decks to reach Legend with. The quest literally tells you to play your cards, which you already wanted to play, and you get hugely rewarded for doing so. It really doesn't take too much to complete this quest, and it just feels too oppressive and too strong. Playing 8 pirates in standard is not so hard and in wild it's even easier because you have a ton of one drop pirates in there. We all know that wild is also plagued by pirate warrior so I think if you want to shoot both decks raid the docks should require you to play 3 pirates on each step or at least on step 2 you also need to be playing 3 pirates. Cause right now in wild you can basically curve this out as soon as turn 5. Whereas in standard, turn 6 or turn 7 is usually where you get it. I know it's a legendary card, but at least it's not from the new set, so please do something about it, Liz. The secondary option for Pirate Warrior would be Defias Cannoneer, which again is just absurdly good for a 3 mana card. It is so easy to set up this card to actually work, so it's always gonna be a 3 mana deal 4 damage to the enemies. And it's a free free statted pirate as well, so you also get your quest progression, unlike with the cannons. It's only a common card, so it's gonna be a lot easier for Blizzard to actually think about this one. And I think what we can do here is at least drop the health to this guy down to 2, which is not really the problem, but I really don't think they're gonna be bumping it up to 4 mana. Maybe making a 2-2 would feel a little bit more fair, even though we all know the effect is just insane. And nobody in their right mind is leaving this guy alive anyway, but this way at least it's gonna be a lot easier and a lot more susceptible to cheap removal. And the final standard card we have here is Mistress Might. We all remember how Blizzard said the charge is not a fun mechanic and they don't want it in the standard game. So they deliberately removed all of the charge cards out of the core set or they hall of fame them. Mr. Smite right now unlocks very stupid combos including with druids and we all know about the Edwin combo in Rogue as well. And let's not forget this is actually a pirate you could be getting out of the Rakara cannon, which is just absurd. I really think that Mr. Smite should be giving your other pirates charge and this way we're gonna see a lot less stupid stuff. If Mr. Smite is giving your other pirates charge, it's still gonna be a very strong card in Pirate Warrior and in Rogue as well, but at least it's not going face itself, you know? And it's not gonna be that bad for you to actually see this out of the Rakara cannon, even though it's still gonna be pretty busted. That's it for the standard cards, now let's check out what we could be doing in Wild as well. 
One of the most obvious problems in the wild right now is Sorceress Apprentice, which is basically the same problem like in Cantor's Flow. Sorceress Apprentice has been a part of the most degenerate combos in the wild for the longest time, and like I said, I really think it's wrong for cards to be getting discounted below 1 mana, because it just unlocks so much stupid stuff. The simple solution here would be for the text to change from your spells cost 1 less to give your other beasts plus 1 attack. I know, I know, whatever. But yeah, obviously it should state do not reduce below 1 mana. It's still gonna be somewhat playable, but it's not gonna allow that many uninteractive decks to be plaguing wild. We already talked about Pirate Warrior and Raid the Docks and Defy Us Cannon here, so if some of those changes happen, I think this is gonna help wild as well, so no need to talk about Pirate Warrior again in wild. And the last card on the list, I gotta be honest, I really didn't think about this nerf, but I really like what Zeddy proposed here. Quest Hunter is the third most oppressive deck in wild right now, and Rapid Fire is the main reason for that, because it just does too much. It's literally two cards that complete both your steps on the quest, and they're insanely good even after you finish your quest too. We all know that Odd Quest Hunter is the most oppressive variant of Hunter right now there, and a simple solution here would be to bump this to deal 2 damage and to cost 2 mana, and that way this is not gonna get included in Baku Hunters, and that's just genius. So yeah, these are some of the nerfs I think should get included into the game soon. Obviously I'm not saying all of these nerfs should get included, but I do believe some of them definitely will be hitting home. Let me know in the comments what you think the future nerfs might be, so we can discuss it. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video guys, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you can also hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.